Can a practicing homosexual go to heaven? On the loaded questions. If a man is really saved, will he really do those things if he's a real Christian? Because you and I know that good people are supposed to go to heaven, and we know that bad people are supposed to go to hell. So if you are bad and you live bad, then you ought to go where the bad people are supposed to go. Only the good people are supposed to go to heaven. We've heard that all our lives. You have to be good. You've got to do right. You've got to live right. And if you live wrong, you don't get to go. Everybody's heard that. But now I want you to look at your Bible. In the book of Romans in chapter 11 and verse 6. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. In other words, it's either by grace or it's by works. It says if it's by grace, then it can't be by works. But if it is by works, then it cannot be by grace. Which is the stronger motivation for a person to do right? Should a man tell people that there is a heaven and that there is a hell and that if you live wrong and if you do a lot of these sins that are wicked, you are going to hell. So if you want to go to heaven... You have to stop doing those bad things. Wouldn't that be a great restraint upon individuals? Not to do those things if they knew they were going to hell if they do these bad things. So therefore, because we don't want people to do these bad things. Because if they do, they're going to hell. That if they knew this, well then they'll live right. Because they don't want to go to hell. But a problem is this. Most of the world already believes that. Most of the world believes that if you're bad, you're going to hell. So if they know that, why aren't they being good? True? If it's true, why aren't they living right? If you have to be good to go to heaven, then why isn't everybody living good to get there? Either they don't really believe it, or they think it's impossible for them. Or if you are going to go to hell, why not carry it to its extreme? If I'm going to hell anyway, I might as well live like I please. True? If I'm going to go to hell, why not just go ahead and commit as many sins as I possibly can, do whatever I want, because I'm going there anyway. Because I've had people tell me this. If you're a Christian and you have eternal life and you're going to heaven, if you tell people that you can go to heaven and still do things wrong, they're going to live like they please. Anyway. So it seems like whether you're going to heaven or hell, people are going to live like they want. If I know I'm going to hell, I'm going to live like I please. If I know I'm going to heaven, I'm going to live like I please. So it don't look like either one is a restraint upon a person's life. If it was, why are people doing what they're doing? The world is in a mess. People are living in adultery. Murders everywhere. Living in sin. Tra trash. Filth all over the world. Well, telling people they're going to go to hell doesn't seem to be working. It seems like people are so consumed with themselves, they really don't care what God said. They don't care if there's a heaven. They don't care if there's a hell. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. Why should we waste our time trying to change people when they don't want to be changed? It is not my job to make people straighten up and fly right. I can't make people live godly. I can't make people stop their sinning. If God's Word don't work, nothing will work. So I'm just going to tell it the way I truly understand it. Can a man... And I hope that people that are listening by way of radio will not turn off the dial, but listen to my answer. Can a Christian be a practicing homosexual and still go to heaven when he dies? Yes. Can a person be a practicing murderer, a serial killer, and still go to heaven? Yes. 
Can a person, a Christian, be a practicing adulterer and still go to heaven? Yes. Don't he have to keep getting forgiveness for those sins? No. And still go to heaven? Yes. I don't care how bad you can materialize it in your mind about how wicked an individual can be. Can a Christian do all of those things and still go to heaven? Yes, he can. Most preachers would not tell you that. But the fact of the matter is, yes, he can. And I'll also throw this in. I don't care how righteous a man may live. The most righteous man that you know. They can read his Bible and go to church and pray, do all the good. Give to charity all the good things he can possibly do. And when that man dies, if he hasn't done that one thing, trust Christ to save you, he still goes to hell. True? Regardless of how righteous he may be, he goes to hell. If he hasn't trusted the Lord. But if the most wicked man, regardless of how he lives, if he has trusted Christ as Savior, he goes to heaven. He says, it's not fair. I didn't say anything about being fair. I'm not God. I'm not the judge. The Bible says that God so loved the world. Every person in the world, every wicked individual in the world. Understand, I am not advocating anybody live in sin. Just because I don't tell a person that if you do these bad things, you're going to go to hell, doesn't mean that I want bad people to do these bad things. No, I don't want them to do that. But that's not the reason they go to hell. That would be it lying to them. So no, I don't tell people, you're going to go to hell because you do all these bad things. That's not true. Neither am I going to tell people, if you do these good things, you'll go to heaven because that's not true. You see, a person's destination is not dependent, dependent upon how a man lives. Always keep that in mind. How a man lives has nothing to do with his destination. Yet I heard that all my life. If you live good, you go to heaven. If you live bad, you go to hell. And yet it's not true. God says, if it's by grace, it cannot be by works. But if it is by work, it cannot be by grace. It's one way or the other. Grace means unmerited. It means you don't merit it. You don't deserve it. You mean you can go and don't deserve it. That's what grace is. Works means that you have to do good works to get it. It's one way or the other. Salvation either has to be a true gift or it's not a gift. Either it's a gift or it's not. Or it has to be because you earned it. Now, which way is it? Take your Bible and turn there to the book of Ephesians and chapter 2. The Bible says here in the book of Ephesians and chapter 2 and verse 8, make sure you are clear on this one point. A man's either saved by grace or by works. But he can't be saved by both. But what does he say? He says there in verse 8, For by what? Grace are you saved. You're saved by grace. Grace means you did not earn it. You did not deserve it. Not one person sitting here in this room that is saved was saved because you deserved it. No person in this room or listening by radio or anywhere in the world has ever been saved because they've been good. No man has ever been saved because they deserved it. They're not saved because they joined the church. They did any good deed. God never saved anybody because of that. Nobody ever will be saved because of that. Salvation is the gift of God. Saved by grace. What is grace? Unmerited favor. Getting something from God you don't deserve. Now, out of all the people in all the world, the Bible says all the world is guilty before God. All have sinned and come short of God's perfection. In God's eyes, he says, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. They have all sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Everybody. And the wages of sin is death. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Here in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, because of what you believe. And that not of yourself, not of yourself, it is the gift of God. It's not of yourself, it is a gift. It's not because you did any good works. Then he says in verse 9, these three words, very important, not of works. Why? Because it's not of yourself. It's not by what you and I do that saves us. 
You are not saved because you lived a certain way. Titus chapter 3, look at this very quickly, page 1284. Here in Titus in chapter 3, look there in verse 5. The Bible says this, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. Saved is past tense. And because you have been saved, it was not because of some past works that you did. Look what he said. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. You were not saved because of what you have done. Salvation is a gift, totally free. When Christ died on the cross, he paid the debt for how many of our sins? He died on the cross and paid for my sins from the time that I was born to the time that I die. All of my sins are all paid. Man is saved by what? Grace. If I still got to heaven, that would still be what? Grace. Because I didn't deserve it. If a man committed serial murders, if he is saved, he's still a child of God, he still goes to heaven when he dies. Am I advocating that? No, I am not, because sin is wickedness, and God says for His children to depart from iniquity, be separate, to live godly, be ye holy, for I am holy. All those things, but the consequence is never to be hell. For example, if you were to jump off the Empire State Building, and on the way down you realize the error of your ways, And you, at that moment, trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior. In midair, will God forgive you of your sins and save you? Yes, He will. Will trusting Christ as your Savior do away with you hitting the ground, though? No. You still are going to suffer the consequences, but it will not be hell. There are still consequences to sin in our life that we must account for and will have to pay for. The law of sowing and reaping is still in effect. An alcoholic who ruins his kidneys is still going to have to suffer the consequences. The man who cuts off his arm and says, Lord, I shouldn't have done that, still has to live with his arm chopped off. Just because God forgives you of all of your sin doesn't mean that your next-door neighbor will forgive you for running off with his wife. He may want to put a bullet right between your eyes, and I hope he does. When you steal something, God will forgive you, but I hope that the government don't and put you behind bars for the rest of your life. You see, there's still other results of sin, but the penalty of hell will never be placed against you. No, a Christian cannot ever go to hell in the future. Because when you trusted Christ as your Savior, you received the gift of eternal life and you have eternal security. You are secure for eternity. And if you're not eternally secure, you are not secure. It's either by grace or it's by works. Well, what motivates people? What is that restraint upon an individual to make them live right? Telling a man he's going to go to hell if he lives bad doesn't make him live good. Does it? No. And don't blame the gospel and the truth of the gospel upon why some Christians don't live right just because, well, they're, they're never going to have to go to hell to pay for their sins. No, something else is missing. Something else that should challenge and motivate us. You see, as a child of God, when you are born into God's family, you become His child that moment, born into His family, and you're going to heaven whenever you die. And that can never be changed, never be taken away from you. Now, I want you to take your Bible and turn over there to the book of Romans. The book of Romans and chapter 4. I want you to look there in verse 5. It says in verse 5 of chapter 4, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. You're saved because you took God at his word and you believed. That by trusting Him and Him alone as your only hope to get to heaven, God said He will save you based upon that one deed alone, nothing else. And God says that by trusting Christ, that is not considered a work because it says, to him that worketh not but believeth. So you can believe and not work. 
That is contrary to our human nature. That does not seem right. It doesn't seem fair. doesn't seem like that's the way it ought to be. But you and I did not design salvation. God did. This is the way God says it is. And every preacher in every church throughout the world that's telling people they have to live a certain way to get to heaven, they're not of God. They are false teachers. You're either saved by grace or not saved at all. You are saved forever or not saved at all. Am I advocating people to live in sin? Anybody that darkens these doors and listens to me long enough knows that I do not advocate people, God's children, to live in sin. Ain't that true? I'll do anything I can to challenge and motivate people to live right, but not to get to heaven. And I'm not going to lie to people and say, you're going to go to hell if you don't straighten up and fly right, because it's not true. Man goes to hell because of unbelief. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. But he that believeth not, the wrath of God abideth upon him. He that believeth, you don't believe it. He that believeth on me hath, present tense, right now, everlasting life. If it's everlasting life, how long would it last? Last forever. And that means all my sins are paid. I can't go to hell in the future. Well, I've had people say, well, if you tell people that, they're just going to go out here and live like the devil. I believed this for 35 years and I haven't done it. That's not the reason why people do it. As a child of God, the Bible says this. And I want you to see it. Look there in Romans in chapter 6 and verse 1. If what I'm saying is true, and a man can't lose his salvation, and yet he commits a lot of sins, you name it, and the Christian can commit it. Yes, even practice it. Live in it. Is he still going to go to heaven? Yes, he will. If works could not save you, bad works can't take it away. In Romans in chapter 6, what shall we say then? Shall we what? Continue in sin that grace may abound? Look up here just a moment. If I commit ten sins, God's wonderful grace can cover my sins. Grace that is, what's the name of that song? Grace that is greater than our sins. Grace that's greater than our sins. And it's true. If I commit 50 sins, God has enough grace to cover my sins. If I commit a thousand sins, God's grace is sufficient to cover a thousand sins. I don't care how many, because God's grace is enough to pave and cover it all. To wipe it away. As though it never happened. Grace that is greater than our sins. Because that's true. The last part of that verse says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, should I commit more sin so that I can get more grace? The answer, no. God forbid. Well then why shouldn't I live in sin? Because you see, there's other penalties beside hell. Just because I'm not going to hell, there's no reason that I should live in sin. Because the Bible says there are consequences to me as a Christian. Well, what sin will do to me as a Christian? Take your Bible now and look there in the book of 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. You see, lying to people don't work. Because you can tell a person, don't do all these sins. And that doesn't work. Threaten them with hell. That doesn't work. Tell a Christian that once you're saved, if you live in these sins and you commit some of these sins, you're still going to go to hell and you've got to get saved again. That doesn't work. Why don't just tell them the truth? Once you're saved, you're saved. You have eternal life. You're a child of God. You're going to heaven when you die. Not, not you're a child of God. Because you are a child of God, the Bible says love is a greater power than the desire of sin. If we can just get people to fall in love with the Lord. All the rules and laws and regulations will never make a man always do the things that he's supposed to do. But love will reach further than that. Look at verse 14. 
For the love of Christ constraineth us. Means to motivate us. What motivates me? Love is to motivate me. Telling a person that if you don't live right, you're going to lose your salvation, that's a lie. That's not the truth. Christian can't lose his salvation because salvation is not in his hands. When you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you were trusting Christ to take you to heaven. And if he takes you to heaven, you can't go to hell unless he loses you. And he said, I'll never cast you out. He said, I'll never lose you. I will never forsake you. He's the one who justified you. He's the one who paid for all of your sins. He's not going to do it to you. If he doesn't cast you out and he won't lose you, well, who in the world is going to? There is nobody else. You can't do it to yourself because you trusted him. You're trusting the Lord to take you to heaven. And once you do, you're in his hands. Not all state, you're in God's hands. And he'll never fail and never leave you. And so he says here, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge. In other words, we think like this. Here's how we should think. Not everybody thinks this way, so therefore they won't have the same results in their life. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That he died for all, that they which live are those that believe on Christ and receive eternal life. Should not henceforth, that means from now on, should not. What you should do, what you have to do is two different things. I should live for God, but I don't have to. And it will not affect my salvation, not one iota. It will not affect my destination. That can never be altered, can never be changed by me or God. But see, there's more than just getting to heaven. There's more than just being alive here upon this planet. I want more than just to be saved. I want God's blessings upon me here and now. I want God's rewards when I get to heaven. I want to be used by God. I love God. And the Bible says if a man loves God, the same shall be known of him. You're known by what you do with your life, what you really love. If I love the Lord, then I know that me living in sin hurts Him. And so therefore I try to correct areas in my life that I know that are not right. You have to control the way you think. And he says, Should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto Him which died for them and rose again. I should live for the one who died for me. You see... My motivation is not, well, i got to do this to, so I don't go to hell. No, I, I can't go to hell. That's not even an issue. I'm a child of God. And I'm going to heaven. But what if a man, a Christian, does do these bad things? A practicing homosexual. I can't think of anything worse than that. But God says there's no difference. What's the difference between being a practicing homosexual, a practicing adulterer? What about some Christians that are practicing liars? I know some Christians that are practicing gossipers. I know some that are practicing drinking. I know some Christians that are just practicing bad mouth. I know Christians that share with me because they have to try to see how to get things right in their life, practicing lustful thoughts. Oh, but people can't see those. They're just as wicked in God's eyes. You say, well, I would never do that other stuff. Yeah, but you might be guilty of these other things. And you know it. And won't live right. Won't live right. But if you're God's child, how should you live? God says that we should forsake things. We should live godly. We should live holy. But see, we're not doing it to get to heaven. If I don't do it because I am a child of God, I know that my heavenly Father, no, He can't send me to hell. But he will chasten me. He'll discipline me. Some he may take home early. The Bible says that some of his children are sick, weak, and dead. Taken home. Because of their rebellion. See, it's better to just tell the truth and believe the truth. And if, if this truth will motivate and help a person to straighten up their life, then fine. 
But the other way is simply a deception. It's a lie. People trying to live right because they're afraid that if they don't, they'll go to hell. That's because they don't know the truth. That's ignorance. That's somebody who's deceiving people. And I made up my mind years ago, either I'm going to preach the book, live by the book, or get out of the pulpit. But I believe that a preacher ought to practice what he preaches. I believe that a preacher ought to try to live righteous and godly and holy. Not because he has to, but because he wants to. It's a right thing to do. Me believing that once you're saved, always saved. I've had so many people, well, that's just giving people a license to sin. No, it's giving them a freedom to serve without fear. Serving the Lord because of what He's done for you. Because you judge in your mind, if He did this for me, why shouldn't I do this for Him? He saved me from hell. And He wants to bless my life. Why shouldn't I let Him bless me? He wants to reward me when I get to heaven. Why shouldn't I let Him? But when you as a child of God will not serve the Lord, you're saying, God, don't bless me. I want you to chasten me. When you won't serve Him, you're saying, Lord, when I get to heaven, I don't want none of your stinking rewards. You wouldn't say that verbally to Him probably, but the way you live tells it. Either you believe the book or you don't believe the book. The God's Word is true or it's not true. For those that are listening by way of radio that ask this question, can a Christian commit these bad things and still go to heaven? I want you to make sure you understand me. Yes, you can. God will never cast you out. God will never lose you. You have eternal life. And we should, as a child of God, live as righteous as God wants us to. But if we don't, he's going to beat the tar out of you. Let's pray, shall we?